and hello again everyone and welcome into Jacket Corner, your source for a weekly look inside Oxford Yellow Jacket football for the 2014 season. And that season got underway last Thursday night for the Yellow Jackets as they went on the road and knocked off Southside by a final score of 42 to 21. Joining me now as he will each week on the Jacket Corner is head coach of Oxford High School, Ryan Herring. And coach, congratulations on the season opening win. That was no cupcake to start your season at all. They're a very good football team, a Southside team. They had a great run last year, making it all the way to the 5A semifinals. A lot of key players back this year for them. And uh, uh, talk about the game. Were you pleased with the, the, the first showing of your football team? Well, it started out great. I thought the fans showed up. Uh, the players showed up. You know, it was just a great night. It, was, it reminded me of back when I was in high school, the atmosphere. You had both sides packed. Uh, everybody was loud, everybody was into it. Uh, of course, Southside's got a good team, and we knew they'd have a good team. Uh, you know, so just it was a great opening night, one of the better opening nights I've been a part of. Well, you mentioned the atmosphere, Coach. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, it was, we expected a big crowd. We, uh, Southside uh, officials had been planning for a big crowd, and then you throw in the fact that the game was on Thursday night. A lot of other people who might not be able to normally come if it were Friday night, were able to come so you had them standing uh, uh, several rows deep around the fence and uh, the stands were packed and again uh, kind of a throwback to uh, to some of the old traditional rivalries that Oxford used to have and those type of big crowds and, and that's what high school football is all about you know you, you don't want to have to drive two hours on an open night if you don't have to if you can stay local you know it's, it's great for the fans it's great for the players and and, uh, and I you know hadn't been a lot of a, a Thursday night proponent but uh, I kind of like playing on Thursday night you know you get a extra day of rest before game two well we got some shots here of the uh, the crowd and the and the atmosphere at uh, Barney Hood Stadium uh, last Thursday night and uh, we'll have the highlights of the game coming up momentarily we'll go in depth on that and uh, a lot of uh, temperature was very it was very high last Thursday night a lot of humidity uh, of course you know the season the way it is now, the AHSAA giving giving us basically an 11 week window to play 10 games. So you started a, a week earlier, a week that's normally a jamboree week, playing a real game. Uh, how did your team handle uh, handle the heat conditions last week? Well, you know, we told them there's one rule and there's no cramping, <laughs> uh, and we didn't have one cramp. Uh, and I, I noticed, you know, they had a couple of guys cramp, but uh, we had no cramps. So uh, no 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 guys were in trouble when we got back. Nobody had to run for cramping. Uh, but, you know, all jokes aside, I, I was very pleased with everybody. Uh, you know, a couple of kids seem a little bit hot and tired, but for the most part, I thought we were well conditioned. That's one of those situations where once you get to that night, there's not much you can do then. It's what you do in advance in your preparation. I guess getting those guys hydrated 24, 48 hours before the game was important. Yeah, we, we preach it every day. Drink water, drink water. Stay off the, the sugar drinks and the Gatorades. Drink water. And if you practice hard, and, and your game play is not much different than your practice play, there's less chance of cramping and going down with something like that or with heat-related issues. So, we, you know, we preached all week, you've got to practice hard. And the week before, practice, practice, practice hard. You don't want to all of a sudden get to the game and you're playing at a different speed. You're going faster than you've been going. You know, if you'll just do that every day, simulate that in practice every day, you know, there's just less of a chance of seeing heat-related issues on the field. Speaking of uh, speed, that seemed to be the big difference last week. Uh, uh, your defense seemed to have a big advantage in team speed. Offensively, you uh, last year you relied a lot on the running game with uh, Rock Thomas uh, in the backfield. Last week, you just threw the ball around very effectively with that good receiving core, good senior quarterback with experience. Again, team speed on defense. Uh, talk about that mix. Well, I've been preaching to the to the players that you know we we we've got to be faster than we were last year. Uh, we've got to play faster and we've got to be faster. And I think we kind of showed that a little bit. I think we showed that we ran around a little better than we did last year. Uh, offensively, of course, you know Ty's a three-year starter. He's expected to play well. He's expected to hit people when they're open. Uh, and, and we've got more threats throwing the ball this year than we had last year. You know, uh, of course, they double team. They double covered Gamble all night long, and that left Cookie wide open several times. And, uh, you know, so I thought the offense did a great job of taking advantage of those mismatches. Yeah, and uh, Cook had a big, big game, uh, oh, over 200 did. yards and receiving, as we'll see a lot of those big catches in our highlights. Coming up, a lot on the way here on the Jackets. Without Corner, further we'll ado, here come the Jackets. Quarterback Ty Weber, he'll be the feature in our player spotlight later in the program. Stay with us. Like
Valley as opposed to Huntsville and Lee. Cook's got him beat. What a play. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Big time. Fakes the handoff, fires it across the middle. Go Cook. Got his man. Cook taking it all the way down inside the 15-yard line. And Barney Third down and 11, ball on the 23. Looking for running room. He's snowed under by yes. a host of Yellow Jackets. Little miss so far. He's, he's a speedster. Ty looking, firing across the way. Got his man. There goes Jake Cook. He's gone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. And no. And we're back on Without the Jackets. Without further ado, to here come the Jackets. Stadium and check out first half highlights. Here, Oxford and Southside. Coach, spot. kind of an interesting Ball start snap. to this game. Anyway. Neither team could He's score in the first quarter, but boy, offense has got cranked up in the second quarter. Yeah, you know, neither one of us got in the end zone early, but I'll tell you one thing, we started out on defense, we hit them right in the mouth. The uh, and we moved the ball down the field. We just had several penalties that, uh, you know, kind of stalled drives. And, uh, you know, anytime you have penalties, it, it just messes up your momentum. But I thought the kids got after a run around hitting. He's in. Takes it in. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. There you get your first points. Ty yeah. Weber squeezes the... Uh, Quarterback sneak in, and yeah, Keaton Boat really up. comes in and did a great job for us all night, getting those extra points. Back on defense right there, there's Ronnie Isaac down. making a good tackle. I thought he was going to get around him. He did a good job of making that tackle. I thought we had some good kick returns and good punt returns the other night. We uh, blocked well. There's Gamble right there. He, uh, you know, he, he'll reverse field in a heartbeat. He's been doing that about his whole career. So I don't say much about it as long as he ends up getting yards. Here we hit Cookie on the post corner, and he does a great job running around get and getting in? behind him in tight yes, places. Touchdown, the Yellow Jackets. Almost perfect. Jackets. 902 to play. Here some of these bigger schools. And, uh, Back on defense right here. They kind of get us right here. Catch us asleep. They get a little pass pass, and my cornerback and safety just kind of go to sleep That's right there. And we're talking about that. You know, when the ball is thrown behind the line, you've got to honor the pass pass always. And, and we got to do a better job of coaching that and uh, having the kids ready to defend that. Right here, I, I thought we were going to get several returns for touchdowns the other day. And, uh, you know, it seems like we're almost about to break it. We're almost about to break it. Next, you know, somebody makes a tackle. But uh, Gam did a good job, but we had good blocking. All the way we'll just block decent and start ourselves out in good field position. That'll always be a, a good start. Get a little option right here to um, Thomas Rudolph. You know, Thomas was a safety last year. Now we got him at running back. Great job on play action right there, hitting Cookie. And, uh, you know, he almost goes in distance. The Southside has some kids who can run. Southside's going, you know, they're going to have a good year this year. You watch. There's uh, Dylan Sipping right there. Does a great job on the counter play. Third down and 11, ball on the 23. Looks like they have a little bit of a mess up right here. There's Lott Cates in the backfield making a play. Boy, Lott was having a great night. Here they come a little misdirection, and uh, really what kills us right here, we don't, the nose doesn't make the right slant call, and the safety doesn't rotate over, and they break one right here, and then they get in the end zone right here. They just kind of plow through us. That number 34 is a good running back. And he's just a sophomore, but he's going to be a good one. Take care of itself. Back, back on offense, we had a little shallow pass. route to uh, Rudolph Great right here. Good job blocking down the field. The ball is uh, we got to get out of bounds right there, right before the half. Speedster. Ty looking, firing across Weber the does way. a great job man. right here. That's about his third Jake read. He's and, gone. Uh, you know, you Touchdown don't see that much Jackson. in high school. Somebody and going to a, a third grade and he no. hits it and Cookie does a great job of getting open, catching the ball and scoring with it. Great job protecting right there also by the offensive line. And that'll pretty much take us to the end of the first half. And there you see the halftime score, Oxford with a 28 to 14 lead. All of those six touchdowns coming in the second quarter. And coach, we talked about the passing game in the open of the show and obviously watching those highlights, you threw the ball around uh, well over 300 yards passing in the game. I think over 200 of that in the first half. Is that pretty much gonna be your game plan every week or was that basically what you were taking what the defense gave you? Well, I could see us throwing the ball that much, you know, as far as yards production, you know, you can't sit here and guarantee we're going to throw for 300 yards, but I think we'll throw the ball as many times every week. Uh, you know, I'd like to see more rushing yards, of course. Uh, but now, if we have 300 every week, that will be great. But the amount of times we throw the ball, I'd love to see us throw it that much every week. Well, you've got the, uh, Thomas Rudolph, you mentioned there in the highlights uh, at, at running back, filling Rock's shoes, and, uh, uh, and he – 
ran tough. There was one highlight, I think, in the second half where he basically runs over a south side defender to get into the end zone. How are you pleased with that young man's performance in the rushing game? Well, I was pleased. First off, we didn't have a fumble. You know, that's, that's the big deal. Uh, don't turn the ball over with interceptions and fumbles. So he didn't fumble. We protected the ball. That was good. And I thought he ran hard. And I think he'll get better each week. You know, that's his first game being the running back. I played safety all last year. Uh, so I think he'll get better every week. Off with your offensive philosophy, again, you ran the ball a lot last year. You threw a lot last Thursday night. Are you a balanced kind of guy when it comes to offensive philosophy? You know, I've always been a little more run than pass. But, you know, to win a game, if we don't do anything but throw the ball, I don't care. Um, but I'd, I'd like for it to be as close to 50-50 as possible. But I could see it, you know, it could sway each week, just, you know, just depend on what we're getting. And who you're playing, and obviously. Who, playing. Uh, who you're playing this week, a lot different from who you just oh, yeah. played in the first game. We'll have more on the game this Friday night with Gadsden City coming up later in the show. But first, we'll take a break and come back with second half highlights. Stay with us as we continue on the Jacket Corner. back in the jacket corner want to take a moment to highlight this year's Oxford quarterback club speaker lineup there you can see things get started on Monday night September the 8th with a uh, former Hoover and Alabama quarterback John Parker Wilson uh, you also see uh, later in the year a uh, former Oxford coach and JSU coach John Gross is scheduled to speak on the 27th but coach I gotta ask you about that September 15th date I understand they're trying to get Coach Robert Herring, your father, and Coach Bill Burgess, who preceded your dad, to speak on the same night. And I don't, I, I, I would like to be there to hear some of those stories if that winds up happening. <laughs> I tell you, that, that's one I'm not going to miss because you know both those guys got a lot of good stories. Both those guys were great coaches and uh, meant a lot to Oxford, you know, and meant a lot to me. Coach Burgess was by yesterday. We talked for about 35 minutes. And, uh, and it's fun to talk to guys who are retired, especially guys who coached here. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, you can kind of lean on them. You can talk about stuff. You can ask them about this, that, and the other. And they tell you stories. It's just good. And, and to have them both close by, and especially my dad, to have him close by, it's an awesome blessing. I'm sure they enjoy <clears throat> being able to just give the advice and not have to deal with that's headaches right, That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, the quarterback club, let's talk about them for a moment. I know the quarterback club at Oxford has always been a, a key part of the success of the football program. They're always there to support the football program and they support them financially too. I know that a lot of things you're able to have and the resources that the Oxford football program has been able to have over the years has been because of the support of the quarterback club. Talk about that support because I know you've experienced it at a, as a player and now you're experiencing it as a coach. Well, it's great. You know, first off as a player, you know, you get to go in there, you get to meet some of these older guys from Oxford who love Oxford football and who love football in general. Uh, you get to eat with them, you get to socialize, uh, of course, you know, just just the fact of being around some of these people that have been here in town forever, that have always supported Oxford football, uh, you know, it's just awesome and, they, and, and, and they're happy to see you, they're happy to see the players, they, you know, and it's, it's supporting the game, uh, you know, it's, it's good camaraderie with those men. Some of those guys have been doing this for 40 years, mm -hmm. you know, I see People like uh, uh, Mr. Shaddix and uh, Ken Litpam, guys that I've known for 30, 30 plus years, and, and they've always been there on Monday nights for quarterback club meetings. It's neat, and, and of course they do a lot for uh, not just football, the athletic program. You know, they give a $10,000 check every spring to the athletic program. So, you know, it, 
it goes without being said what they do for the athletic program at Oxford High School, and we really appreciate them. And keep in mind, again, <clears throat> the speaker schedule uh, begins on September the 8th with former Alabama, and former Hoover, and also former Atlanta Falcon quarterback John Parker Wilson. Let's roll now into second half highlights. As we saw going to break a few moments ago, Oxford with a 28-14 halftime lead over Southside. And uh, here we are with the highlights now beginning Boots the third quarter. Away. Coach, you get the football. Yeah, we get, you know, it, it kind of goes far away from us over Trudarian there, but Gamble. we get it back over here, and I'm thinking Brings we're going to take right this one back line. again. Cuts it back against uh, it looks like it was Finds a crease, the breaks the tackle. and then we get it up the You get it up the 40, that's a good job, motion. that's a good start. We we'll start out here with a little crease, crease. sweep the gamble, quickly, breaks and, the tackle. Uh, you know, he just makes, makes it, it look the easy. It's like he glides. Uh, good okay. job blocking down field. The There's Ty with a great throw and a great catch by, by Cookie Cook. out there. Just First a great catch. Yardage, Man, I couldn't say nothing about Cookie, and Cookie's a good kid, too. Mm -hmm. He's the kind of kid you pour for. Good job right here by Ty. People kind of covered up, takes it down field, running hard. Sometimes I want him to get out of bounds right there because I need him to last about 15 weeks this year. Uh, we throw the screen right here. Great job setting up. Great job by Lyman getting downfield. I think in three or four weeks you'll see Tommy go score on that. He'll take it outside those blockers. A little quarterback counter right here. And uh, Ty does a great job running the ball right there and protecting the ball. And great job blocking. Those linemen did a heck of a job. Right here, the two guards get out there and the ball sweep. And man, they get out there and block it. They kind of hit us late in the end zone right there, but Tommy does a good job of just keeping us cool and getting to the sideline. There's a defense right there scoring. Boy, Kenny Britt right there hit a heck of a lick. I couldn't hardly contain myself watching it. Uh, you know, you don't see that a lot, that kind of lick, and he just did a great job. And you say a lot about this kid right there. He, he got nailed, and then maybe a play or two later, he comes in with a and you know, he missed the tackle right there. And, uh, but he does a great job. I think they said he's, he's Cadillac Williams' nephew or something, so uh, he's got the bloodline to be great, probably. Brings it up to go, we trying again, to get outside himself. Off turn. Uh, once so again, it, 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 you think he's about to go, but we get across midfield, and that and helps. I mean, whether people uh, realize or not, that helps. Uh, the they're right here in kind of a wildcat deal, and they got 34 in there, and, he, and he's That's tough. I don't blame him for doing that. And uh, it again. Here they are, just, just trying to work it down the field. And that's the took a run now. Number 15 could go. I think 15 was as fast as anybody we got. 34 maybe too. Ronnie Isaac right there does another great job on tackle. Isaac doesn't make that play um, and he's off to the right. Going into fourth quarter, 35, 21. You know, game still can go either way. And uh, we get a good stop right there. There's Trey Franks coming in making a good tackle. Balls on the ground and the Yellow Jackets have it. I think momentum swung finally right there. I think. You know, the game kind of starting to take its place got right here. Pass, uh, looking, got Gamble across. Ty does a good job. Hit Gamble right there Makes on the shallow the route. Good job blocking the downfield. We knock a guy's helmet off. Uh, and that's what I like to see. I like to see people blocking. Great uh, job. Uh, Ty anybody. Everybody it always out, thinks about the running back. Very wise the ball, here, but when, Usually when he's running free, somebody's doing a good job blocking. Hand this off, is a good a job right here by Rudolph. Now, he ran the ball hard, ran to the guy right there. And that's job, what I want to see more of next week right in the next. Mm -hmm. I think he finally started. He's right there, he kind of showed his fourth quarter been playing. He was ready to go right out. there. We'll be back. And there you see uh, the final score. Oxford wins it 42-21 to to begin the season. 1-0 uh, and against the Southside Panthers. And uh, this is a, a team now, Coach, that has joined you in the new 6A classification with the uh, – uh, the new classifications this year, adding the 7A. Now Southside is uh, is in your classification, not in your region, but still a, a again a great game to open the season with. Just uh, as as good a non-region game I think as you could have asked for. Well, you know, it was a great environment. That's what you want in high school. You know, you don't want to see 15 people in the stands. Those stands were full. Everybody enjoyed it. The fans, the players, the coaches, parents, anybody. You know, everybody enjoyed it. And, you know, and that's what I'd like to get more of. I'd like to play more local teams if we can, uh, because that's 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 what it's all about. Uh, but now, South, I will say this about Southside: they had a good football team. You know, they had the big kid going to Auburn that didn't play. He had Mono. Uh, I really see them having another good year. I agree with you. I think I think they're going to have another great year. They had a great year last year. Kind of surprised some teams. So some teams will be kind of looking out for them this year. But I, and you mentioned the young sophomore running back. Yeah, they. You know, when he's running free. Offensive linemen are opening holes for him, but I think for for Oxford fans who may not have heard of this young man, Alaric Williams, he's kind of already on the recruiting radar. As a matter of fact, I believe he has two SEC offers now as a tenth grader. So folks need to kind of 
make a mental note of this young man. You're going to have to deal with him for the next couple of years. I know. I, you know, we, <laughs> we'll have him next year, game one, so we'll have to really prepare for him. Uh, but I'm, I, I'm serious when I say it. They're going to have a good team, and that kid will get better. And when they get the big boy back, that's going to help me more. Uh, but I, I just I enjoyed the game, enjoyed playing them. I hope we can keep them, you know, on, on down the road and keep playing them every year. Because uh, you can tell they're, they're a good football team. Well, obviously, this is your first look at this year's team under the lights in a real game situation. Again, you're normally playing a jamboree at this time of year. You're playing a real game against a good football team on the road in a very good environment. What did you learn about your team? Anything that maybe you didn't see coming or maybe that confirmed something you wanted to see? Well, after week one, what's your thoughts? Well, the big deal was I hope we ran to the ball and we hit on defense, and I thought we did both those. Now, they scored 21 points, and they had, uh, we, you know, we had a busted play on the pass pass and the uh, long run by 34. You know, you, but you take, take away about three plays. I thought we played pretty sound. I thought we ran. I thought we hit. I, think, I thought you could hear us hitting. And that's what I tell the players a lot of times. You know, it don't need to be like a silent movie. You know, people ought to hear it. You ought to see people getting tackled, but you ought to hear the collisions. Uh, and I thought we did that. Uh, offensively, I thought we got the ball where we needed to. We didn't just have to try to rely on a run or rely on just a pass. Uh, I think Southside thought that Gamble was going to be our only go-to guy. And I think what everybody can see, including me, is that we've got more weapons than him. Uh, of course, he is a, a weapon, don't get me wrong. But I thought the offensive line did a great job for the first game. But if teams choose to double him up and take him away, it's going to give an opportunity to someone else. That's and right. you proved last week you got guys who can take advantage. Well, we've got much more to come in the Jacket Corner. We've got our player spotlight coming up next. We'll also look ahead to this week's big uh, matchup with Gadsden City. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Scoring a 31. We'll get back to more Trey right after this play. Ty's going to tuck Breaks it. Down. Looks Tucks like he's got run. Got some running room. Now we're back in the jacket corner. Time now for our player spotlight, a feature that we will have each and every week on the program. This week we start with probably the most experienced player on the 2014 Oxford football team, quarterback Ty Weber, three-year starter. Here's TV24's Chase Robinson. Leadership is a very important quality for a football team, and Oxford High School has found theirs in third-year starting quarterback Ty Weber. Yeah, you know, Ty being a three-year starter is huge for our offense, the leadership standpoint, uh, from, from just knowing, knowing what we expect every day, uh, getting guys lined up in the right spot, knowing what the defense is doing, uh, just, just senior leadership qualities he brings. Everybody's got to have that player look up to and set a good example for the team. And, you know, when everybody's down, you've got to have somebody pick them up because you can't have no bad practices, no bad games. Everything's got to be positive. With all eyes on him already, a lot is expected of Weber both on and off the field. I've heard old coaches say that you're only as good as your quarterback. So uh, having, ha having said that, uh, I think Ty knows that we're expecting a lot out of him. We're expecting him to be uh, uh, on point all the time. We're expecting him to be a leader, you know, in, in the school building, on the football field, practice field, away from the school, because, uh, you know, there's a lot riding on him, and this team's dependent on him. As Weber goes into his senior season as a yellow jacket, He's ready to make it count. It's been a good time. I mean, it's flown by. It goes by real quick. And uh, it's been a good two years playing football for him. And you know, we've done a lot of good things and ready to take a little bit farther this next year. For the Jacket Corner, I'm Chase Robinson. Well, I tell you, Coach, if you're going to have success in this sport, you got to have that position taken care of. And you got a good senior leader right there. He, he has been. He's been working hard. He's been a verbal leader leader, uh, you know, and uh, in the weight room, on the field. So, you know, we're expecting big things out of Ty this year, and he knows that. There's a lot on his shoulders. We've, we've added a lot more read type stuff for him. And you saw in the first game already, you know, that he's, he's able to check down to other receivers. It's not just one guy. Uh, he can run. He can throw. Uh, and, it, you know, like an NFL, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a team. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we, we've got to have a quarterback, just like everybody else that's going to be successful. And we have one. You know, we just got to keep him healthy and uh, play from there. And next week, our player spotlight will be on wide receiver Trey Gamble, who uh, uh, will definitely have a major impact on this 2014 season for Oxford. Speaking of impact, a big impact this year is the new region alignments that facing uh, teams across the state of Alabama, and it has obviously affected the 
Oxford Yellow Jackets. Here we see the uh, brand new 6A Region 3 coach that you're competing in this year. And uh, quite different than what Oxford fans have used to have been used to seeing the last several years. Uh, there you see Benjamin Russell, of course, Oxford, Pell City, Chelsea, Opelika, Chilton County, and Valley making up the 6A Region 3. Uh, very tough region, some very tough teams with a lot of tradition. What's your thoughts on this new region? Uh, I like the region. I really do. I, I like it better than going to Huntsville. You know, I just, that, that drive to Huntsville, I just didn't <laughs> like. And, and some of the teams you played in Huntsville, you know, the just the crowds weren't going to be there at their place or when they came here, they weren't going to bring a crowd. Uh, you know, Benjamin Russell, that'd be a great game. We, we've played them in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking the other day, I think we're eight and eight all time with them. So that's a good matchup. Pell City, of course, is right down the mm -hmm. road. That's a great matchup. Opelika is, is kind of everybody's favorite to win the region. They've got like five SEC commitments on defense right now. So I'm sure that'll be a great, great football game, be real physical. Uh, you know, Valley, that's kind of a different drive. It's like you're going to Auburn the next thing you know, you try to get in LaGrange, Georgia. It's, uh, it's different. Chilton County, which is right above Prattville, which is over in Clanton. So, you know, we're kind of going to travel weird week to week. Uh, Chelsea's right there on 280, South Park 280 on, you know, right below uh, Oak Mountain and all that. So it, it's different, but I like it. And I know one of the things you want to try to do is, is to kind of merge the new era that we're in and the, the, the class and the region you're having to compete in with obviously having a good kind of a local rivalry flavor to the schedule. And I think this year's schedule is a big improvement in what we've seen in the past. When you look at, obviously, as you mentioned, some of those teams in the region, Ben Russell back on the schedule, I think that's an interesting game. And of course, Pell City has turned into a good rivalry. Then you throw in the South Side and keeping Gadsden City on the schedule. I think it's a big improvement over what Oxford fans have seen the last few years. Yeah, I like it. I think it's gonna be a fun schedule. You know, we've got Vestavia coming here. Uh, the only kind of game that for non-region that was far away uh, is the last game of year, Decatur, and we just got in a pickle trying to find games, trying to find teams that would play us, uh, and we didn't want to drive to Montgomery or Huntsville or Mobile or Florence if we didn't have to, uh, but we ended up getting Decatur. Uh, I know their coach. He's a good guy, Coach Adcock, and we just said, hey, let's play. We, we kind of know each other, know what to expect from each other. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a drive, but I think it'll be a good, clean game. All right, finally, Coach, uh, this week it, it, it's a tough matchup for you. Gadsden City no longer a region opponent. They're in Class 7A now, but they're on your schedule this week in Week 2. You've got to go there and play them at Titan Stadium. They had an impressive win last week down at Auburn in double overtime. What have you seen from them on film so far? Uh, they are much improved on offense. You know, last year, early in the season, because it was their coach's first year, you could tell they were uh, – you know, not, not moving fast, it was all new. And this year they have a quarterback who can throw it and run it. They've got receivers, they've got running backs, and they've got big linemen. I mean, they've got some big linemen, I, I, two of them over 300 pounds, uh, and the other ones aren't small, they're around 280. So offensively, they can score, uh, they can run it, they can throw it. Defensively, you know, kind of went into the season thinking Opelika would probably be the strongest defense. Uh, Gadsden City looks pretty good. Gadsden City runs and hits. They're kind of fun to watch on film because uh, they ran and hit and watching them in Auburn, but it was a real physical game. And uh, you know that's what football is all about. So I think it's going to be a fun game, a tough game, a very physical game. All right, Coach, best of luck to you uh, on Friday night against Gadsden City. Thank you. Thanks for watching this week. We'll be back with you again next week with highlights of Oxford and Gadsden City right here on the Jacket Corner. Without further ado, here come the Jackets. Next few years, Opelika Valley, as opposed to Huntsville and Lee. Cook's and got him beat. Fakes the handoff, got Cook down the seam. Cook's got We're down in 11, ball on the 23, looking for running room. He snowed under. Yeah, and we've got some, we've got some size coming up. Handoff, got a big hole, takes it in. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Great job, Tommy Rudolph. Good effort play right there. Thomas Rudolph, your ball carrier. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets.